stay here. Now let's look at the male. He's at least the, at the cub greeting the little one here. Definitely a male. Yeah, this is just fantastic to watch this hierarchy again. And remember, we spent so much time with these things, learning the hierarchy, learning who was dominant over whom, how they all fitted in with each other. And now we kind of have to start again because it's been so long since we've spent any time with them. Now, the reason I say that this one, to me, looks subdominant or certainly less dominant than ribbon is the body language and also the way that he's kind of unsure about whether to come in or come out. I think he's male because he's more slightly built. He's not just a small hyena. He's blinded in one eye, he's got scuffed ears, and he's got quite a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a mangled skin, but there's definitely an indication of age in the way that his hips are sticking out. So I think that's a male. That's fantastic. Get out of your way quickly. Now that's very adventurous for this young th thing. Wonderful playtime. There we go, coming back, scuttling back. Oh, now something's happened. You see, as soon as there's any kind of irritation or any kind of threat or any perception of threat, it'll go scuttling back into the mound. And ribbon the mother very comfortable, very sort of yeah, comfortable in her place in whatever hierarchy they have. And I don't know, just looking at her face there and wondering if she hasn't had a good meal last night. It looks like it's got blood on it to me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Looks a bit messy. There's certainly a bit of a niff in the air around here today. There's definitely some blood there. And she's looking quite sort of rotund around the hips. <coughs> she's probably eaten quite recently. The little cub is now under the car again. Now back again. And I'm sure, as with, I think, most young mammals... Oh, back again. With most young mammals probably would have benefited from maintaining or certainly being able to maintain a relationship with a sibling. And unfortunately, a sibling just not possible at the moment. We don't know what happened to the other one. I would say it's, I mean, I'm very reticent these days to be definite about anything out here, but I would say almost certainly uh, dead. Why or how is anyone's guess? Danielle, this question that you've asked is um, is a, is a good one, and it's a really nice discussion point because it's so unusual in the mammal kingdom or mammal class. You say, why is it that the females are bigger than males? Well, from a purely physical perspective the reason they're bigger is that they have a higher testosterone level and so that they and a genetic predisposition to size that the males do not have and that's normally the case of course in oh she's limping a bit it's normally the case or the opposite of the way it is with with mammals of course the males are normally bigger than the females and all mammals including our own species but the reason for it, the real why, seems to be that the hierarchy works very well like this because the females dominate. You can see this that happening right there. They're the ones that look after the youngsters. They're the ones that maintain the territory. The male's job is purely to 
act as a sort of mate or sperm donor, if you like, and then also to defend the territory against other males. Not necessarily against other females because they'd get beaten up by other females. They do quite a lot of foraging. But the other thing that they are unable to do when the, being smaller than male, the females is engage in infanticide. So they do not kill youngsters. And it's a feature of just about well, a huge number of mammal species that the males will kill unrelated youngsters that are not theirs. Well, obviously, if they're unrelated, they're not theirs. But it doesn't happen in hyenas because the females are too big, and so the males don't ever get a chance. And so it actually works really well from a social point of view. Why it has only evolved in hyenas, I think, is unclear. But it is a very effective mechanism, and I think it probably has quite a lot to do with infanticide. Infanticide has driven a huge number of different mammal adaptations and social interactions and I think you'll find that it's got something to do with that. But it means that the males play a very limited social role in the life, well, yeah, it is a limited role, social role in the life of the clan. And it means that they cannot hurt the youngsters and as they are not primarily responsible for any kind of child rearing or cub rearing it makes real sense that the females should be completely dominant you might ask yourself therefore why it is that in other species it has not evolved Leo, oh here comes another one in that's also a male. Might be a young female. That's a male. Leo, a clearly more dominant male than the blind one. Leo, you say, do their faces ever get permanently stained from feeding? Leo, I don't think so, no. I think they're all... I mean, probably eventually. I'm just going to sneak forward. Come on, car. I suppose that they might be slightly stained over the course of time but I don't think anything like um, perhaps like a, a dog's face might get stained from feeding on food that isn't particularly um, natural to eat there they are all three now and ribbon is up but surely over time I guess yeah I mean their muzzles probably do change slightly Now, around about this time of the day, they often leave the adults. I don't know where they go, because you very seldom find hyenas in the bush if you're walking. But it seems that they feel almost like if they're not going to be here to look after the cub and feed it and play with it, it's almost more advantageous for them not to be here, because the cub can go inside and sleep, and the smell of these adults doesn't attract other hyenas or other predators. She seems to have spotted something. Or she can smell something on the wind. Leslie, it's a difficult question to answer, but another nice discussion board. You say a hyena is the only species that are female dominated. Now, some of you will be thinking, no, no, Leslie, elephants are the same. They also live in a matriarchal society. They live in a matriarchal society, but it's not female dominated. A big bull will completely dominate any situation that elephants find themselves in. There's another hyena calling way to the south. And I'm sure part of the same clan, because they're not reacting negatively at all. So I don't know of any other mammal species where the females completely dominate the males, where they are bigger than the males, and where they are the ones that run the hierarchy completely. There are many mammal species where the males, or where the females are 
Oh, there are a few mammal species where the females live in female-dominated groups, but very few where the, in fact none that I can think of, where the females completely dominate the males in all forms of the hierarchy. So you can tell us if I'm wrong. I, I don't think I'm wrong. Hashtags foreign life is how you do that. <laughs> now, a aka Peaky PT Watcher, you're wondering about the belly on the female ribbon, and that's not her there. I think this is a, a more dominant male than the blind one. There he goes. And you say she looks pregnant. No, she's definitely not pregnant. But they do get very heavy around the belly when they're lactating. And I think she's also just eaten. So both of those things will combine to make her look very kind of fat and pregnant. This is a younger hyena as well. Younger and slightly more dominant. Sorry, my head is really in the way here. So we're going to sit here for as long as we can. And while we do that, Tristan has left his elephants and he's got himself an amphibian. <laughs> 